Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Confidence is never a question when it comes to wide receivers, and these two are no different. It's Green's Bengals going up against Brown Steelers. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, and Heinz Field. Moments ago, a scene that's played here since 2004. Big Ben Roethlisberger greeted by this sold-out Heinz Field crowd. His Steelers getting set to match up with Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon God. As we get set here, Charles, we talk about wide receivers. You know, Larry mentioned it in the open, but that's a big spot to look at here in this one. I think you identified it perfectly because these guys have such an impact on the game nowadays because they throw the ball more than ever. And whether they're throwing it short, medium, or long, can they snatch it out of the air and create even extra yardage with run after catch? Here we go from Heinz Field as Chris Boswell tees it up and boots it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. There's the stiff arm. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Here come the Bengals now to take over. Their seventh-year quarterback from TCU bringing him onto the field. That's the Red Rifle, Andy Dalton. And remember, he was a day one starter his rookie year, and that was the year of the lockout. So he didn't even get the OTAs and minicamp that led into it, led his team to the playoffs that year, led his team to the playoffs his first five years in the league before a 6-9-1 record in 2016. They go play action here on first down. And he's got the hook up to Brandon LaFell. Give him 17 and a Cincinnati first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Well, the offense lining up first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. And he finds Tyler Croft. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So here we go, first and ten now. Now the rookie from Oklahoma, it's Joe Mixon. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And a look now at the Cincinnati offense. When you're right on the verge of being a top 10 overall offense in the NFL, you would think that things are pretty good for your team. But the Bengals want to improve. They were 13th in rushing. And for a team that wants to run the football first, last, and always, that's an area that they're trying to jump up in 2017. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, it's Mixon. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. They'll lose a yard and it brings up third. I say the staff that's up in the booth watching the game, they may want to file that one away. See how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check into a throw the next time.
And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. Going deep downfield for Ro It's caught at the 10. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So the big play nullified a legal forward pass. And maybe we know why they were able to get such a good chunk of yardage on that play. That pass was illegal. Now the left-footed punter in his ninth year, Kevin Huber on to kick. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense and Ben Roethlisberger, this crew should be flying high after knocking Kansas City off their undefeated perch last week. Roethlisberger, 252 yards and a touchdown after throwing five interceptions the week before. And questioning himself, whether he still had it or not. Sometimes I wonder if when people do that, if they're just trying to motivate themselves. And in this case, it worked really well for Ben Roethlisberger if indeed that's what he was trying to accomplish. 252 yards, a touchdown, and more importantly, a win. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. That'll bring up second down. On the offensive side of the ball for Pittsburgh, things will look like this. And two of the best skill guys in the league, Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, back to their old selves in that Kansas City win. Yes, LB and AB <laughs> combined for 346 yards from scrimmage. Monster win in Kansas City, the last undefeated team in the NFL. They go down. Le'Veon Bell, 191 total yards. Antonio Brown, 155. And how about that catch down the stretch that bounced off of the defender, and he catches it. Changes the complexion of the game. And that's complete to Jesse James. And he's able to get up here to the 26. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. Now the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This would be a critical call. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Back deep for the Bengals, Adam Jones. Jones on the return. And now running right through him. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Before this next offensive drive gets going, you know, we'd still have two 0-6 teams in the NFL, the 49ers and the Browns, and you're looking at me because I, I know you made a prediction that <laughs> one of these two teams would win this past week. Yeah, we had the Giants in there going into it as well, right? We had the Giants, 49ers, and Browns, and I predicted that the Browns would be the first to get off the schneid. Instead, it was the Giants. So the Browns looking at me a little crooked eye, aren't they? <laughs> like, hey, just leave us alone and let us play. Don't make any more predictions, man. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. 
This defense for Pittsburgh that we see right now, they held the Chiefs last week to 28 yards rushing, and that was a week after giving up 231 to Jacksonville. Good bounce back game. A monster bounce back for them, and I, all I can think about is head coach Mike Tomlin, who was a wide receiver in college when he played at William & Mary. But I got the sense that he played wide receiver like a defender. Total aggression, all out going after people. And I'll bet he really motivated his defense after what Jacksonville did to them the week before. Second down, Dalton. And the grab by Croft. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 10 yards there on a Bengal first. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Off the play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. He's going to air it out deep for Green. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off. It's the Pro Bowl corner. Joe Hayden with it. And he will bring this all the way up to the 30-yard line. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air. And then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. second here before this next drive starts it seems like every week we're talking injuries and we had three quarterback shoulder injuries from this last week yeah, and it's really unfortunate because we're talking about some of the most recognizable players in the league Jameis Winston really coming on as a young quarterback Trevor Simeon captain of the Denver Broncos and won the job for a second year in a row and of course Aaron Rodgers may be the best quarterback in the league you know Rodgers probably gone for the season Winston, I think they could have brought him back, but they were cautious with him and kept him out of the game. And Simeon did play in the second half in their loss to the Giants. Yeah, that's the good news. Two of the three able to return. Unfortunately for Rodgers, not looking so good. This is Bell. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second down following the run. Again, it's Bell. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. The defensive starters now for Cincinnati. Cincinnati defense is well respected around the league, but they didn't play to their standard in 2016. If you just look at the pure numbers, ended up 17th overall in total defense. But in the tough division that they're in, the AFC North, they have to be better against the run. They ranked just 21st in 2016. That's got to change for them to make the improvement they want in 2017. Try and run for it with Bell. And some room to maneuver. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. 
Fresh set of downs here. Now the rookie from Pitt, this is James Conner. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. They'll find the rookie, Juju Smith-Schuster. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. And now a first down following that long gain. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. Even with the good move he showed, he'll be brought down short of the 15. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll go again with Bell. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And the third down pass falls incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. And Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. So they were able to move the ball into the red zone, but they'll wind up coming away with just three. Yeah, 32-yarder. That's equal to an extra point nowadays. And those are no problem for an NFL kicker. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. 
Getting set to go again. Andy Dalton marches back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Nixon gets the nod to start the drive. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Throw left side, complete to Ross. And he's going to be shoved down pretty hard. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now Brown. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. On second down, it's Bell. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of two, now third down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. And the Steelers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Jordan Berry now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. 
Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Play fake. Here's Dalton. Wide open receiver complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. So just a lone field goal in this first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. More from the Steel City coming up after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with a football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it. It's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. second down looking for his running back and he's got it they'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays in need of a conversion on third down they had the big play to start the drive not much since Dalton here from the gun. And that's complete to Croft. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Sets up play action. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Bud Dupree leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. And some space here. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. A great effort there. 33 yards. And the Bengals are in for six. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, 
Yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit, but for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. That time, a six-play drive. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. Bullock out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays for one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. On second down, Roethlisberger. This is Bell on the dump off. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It'll be a gain of six, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but um, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed him for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. First and ten for Dalton. Over the middle, that's caught by Ross. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He lost two there, and it's third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. throw here Dalton open man is Uzama and he gets it to the 34 good enough for the first 10 yards there on a Bengal first they brought in the heavy set on third down and that usually means running play but we have seen them throw out of that formation and sure enough they snuck the tight end out on that one wound up hitting him for a first down And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Everyone's looking for a bargain in the NFL draft, and I don't think anyone got a bigger one than Cincinnati getting Joe Mixon in the second round. He keeps moving east. He was born in California, then to Oklahoma, and now finding a home in the Queen City. And I don't think it'll take him too terribly long to have a real impact on that city in terms of how he plays the game, because he can run it, catch it, he can do it all. It's second down, Dalton looking. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Now, Bengals on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And he comes back with one complete. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do, and it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. The first down throw coming for Dalton. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he's brought down. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. You think about the great tandems that we've had this decade in the NFL. Think about Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Big Ben, Antonio Brown, Brady and Gronk. But look, Andy Dalton and A.J. Green, they have to rank in there, don't they? Yeah, and two guys that came from the same draft class. A.J. Green in the first round, Andy Dalton in the second round. And what they've meant to the Cincinnati Bengals franchise has been everything. A lot of playoff appearances. First and ten. His throw caught at about the five. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, gets stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. Three. 
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And it'll be Dalton again. He's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Tyler Croft, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals add on to their lead. That's almost just not right. You cover everybody, but those tight ends, they can be awfully reliable. Very reliable. It, the defense just has to hate those guys. This drives them crazy because oftentimes you can't match up with them. They have either with size, speed, or maybe even just strength. Now Bullock to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends with a Bengals score. out now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. <laughs> He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, <laughs> hey, listen, there's, some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Now a first down carry by Bell. He finds an opening past the 40. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there at a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through it. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Roethlisberger and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. And Martavis Bryant back in the fold, which delights not just himself, but of course his quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. This guy, he can do it all, Brandon, able to go across the middle and stave off contact and make catches. Sat out last year, as you're alluding to, year before, though, 50 catches, 765 yards, and six touchdowns. Burger on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. And the pressure gets to him again. 
Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Heinz Field after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Here's Jordan Berry now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. Well, now he's looking just to add to his totals. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now Dalton with a first and ten. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards that time at a Cincinnati first down. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. First and ten, here's Andy Dalton. And the grab by Croft. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Give him 17 and a Cincinnati first down. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses. Catch the ball, how much yards can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. Ross 
And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Back-to-back -back gains of 17, and they are really on the march now. It's a first down. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Throwing on first down, Dalton. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. and We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Seven yards to go on second down. Another chance for Dalton. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. They'll give him a yard on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Now, Bengals on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. Got a man. It's Ross complete. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. I heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Here's Bullock now for the extra point. And it's 21 to 3. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Bullock out now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Roethlisberger going to hand the bell, and he powers his way up past the 30. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock.
And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. Final play of the half, it's Roethlisberger. He's going deep for Brown. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front as we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Steelers trail at home at halftime. The Bengals have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Bengals with the ball early in the second. He'll break free of the pack, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. Bengals go up by four. Now first and ten, Dalton hooks up with his speedy rookie from Washington, John Ross. And he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to the two-yard line. Sticking with the same drive, Dalton's going to complete the pass, and it's going to be caught for the touchdown. Third down from the 30. Dalton hooks up with his speedy rookie from Washington, John Ross. Okay, Larry, a fairly one-sided first half as we get set to go in the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this you're going to do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. The second half starts with a carry by Bell. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on that run. And while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. Going deep here for Bryant. It's caught inside the 25. And all the way down to the 22-yard line. We saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. The give is to Bell. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Single, 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 single. 
from the shotgun. It's Roethlisberger. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Roethlisberger hooking up with Brown to get the Steelers a first. What would you have said to me if I told you in pregame that Big Ben and Antonio Brown wouldn't have hooked up until the second half? I would say that they'd be losing, and they are. Yeah, they are, and they've got to find a way now to continue to connect and try and get their team back in this game. the two no gain there and it's going to set up second and goal well it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play and now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone couldn't do it there it'll be interesting to see offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's James. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Jesse James, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers are able to close the gap just a bit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. It's up and good, and the lead is down now at 11. It's 21 to 10. the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. The third quarter has not been kind to them. After they built that lead at intermission, they've seen that lead shrink. And how much of that is simply execution? How much of that is maybe you lose your edge a little bit because you've got a lead? And you do have to credit the other team some because they've made some adjustments to start to slow them down. Can they find those counters now, those extra plays or plays they haven't run that'll be effective and get them back moving again? They'll be looking for something here, anything to seize that momentum back. On first and 10, Dalton throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. And fans, a quick reminder from the NFL, after nearly a decade of working together in the fight against breast cancer, this year the NFL and the American Cancer Society, they're broadening the scope of their efforts to tackle multiple types of cancer. And you can learn more about the expanded Crucial Catch initiative and access the Defender, a new digital tool that provides personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk at NFL.com slash Crucial Catch. And I applaud the NFL for broadening its, its scope here because... Cancer affects us all in many different ways, and now everyone will have the ones that they can focus on and be able to support. Passing again, Dalton on second and 10. And incomplete there, a nice hit, jars the ball free and brings up third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And that's incomplete. 
don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. No, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know. Yeah. Or the mental focus. Yeah, level. that's but true. Got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger heading back out there. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game, but that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Second down following the run. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. His throw incomplete. Trying to get it there to Martavis Bryant. And it's third down. There's so much precision in an offense, especially when you're throwing the ball. And in an out route, plenty of it. How about the quarterback hitting his back foot? Ball's out of his hands. Receiver making his break, making his cut. He's got to time up perfectly. Not always easy to do. Just let him a little too much. Yeah, I remember back in the good old days, I was talking to a quarterback, and he said everything they did was on the count system. So when he took a snap, he counted in his head for certain routes, different time frames for each one, and he knew if the ball wasn't out of his hand at that point, he'd better eat it because the play was dead. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Jordan Berry now. Standing just outside his own goal line. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Here's Jones. Jones breaking from the contact. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Getting ready to go again. Here's Andy Dalton marching back onto the field. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people, no errors, right? Not turning it over and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in a team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. Now a play fake here on first down. And a Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Cameron Hayward in there to sack him for a loss of six. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Oh, 
Second down, Dalton. He finds Ross right side. It's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Now the Bengals on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run it now out of the gun. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given a little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Dalton on the draw to mix him. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And Cameron Hayward's ability to take on blocks, hold the point of attack, and get upfield. Serves him very, very well. What a nice play there. Yeah, he can take on blocks because he's built like a block. The last two plays each lose a yard. They'll try to move forward here on third and 12. From midfield here, Dalton. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he'll go down, shy of the 40 at the 41. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Fourth down, Dalton wants to throw. He's gonna have his running back, it's complete. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. They'll give him eight on the play, and on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. We always hear about guys wanting to make plays that quiet a crowd. Shh. Yeah. After that one. Here in the third quarter, they were hoping to get the stop, get the football back. Not the case. What a completion on a fourth down play. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's Dalton. It's caught. Left side, Brandon LaFell. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage.
And the eighth play on this drive coming up. This will be Dalton again. Green's got it over the middle. And he gets it down to the 32. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And the Bengals on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and ten. And again, Andy Dalton to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Ah, uh, Heinz Field has always been a tough place for field goal kickers. It's just a very heavy side. Plus, you've got an open end of the field with wind coming off the Allegheny. And sure enough, he kind of chunks this one, and it's no good. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. They'll try and get the running game going with Bell. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Defense is always talking about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. On second down, Roethlisberger. Throw left side complete. It's James. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. And the Steelers on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. Here it's third and two. On the counter, here's Bell. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. First down and ten now for the offensive group. Here's Roethlisberger. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. A give to Bell. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. On 
on third down, Roethlisberger. He completes it to Bryant. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. The Steeler first down, Roethlisberger to Bryant. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up the first down. Now the offense lining up first and ten. is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Steelers with the football, but trailing here as we get going in quarter number four. And here comes play number six on this drive. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And it's second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Second and ten, it's Roethlisberger once more. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And down he goes, taking it inside the ten to the seven. That one goes for 24 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. The pigskin on the seven yard line now. It's first and goal. Bend to throw again. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. Second and goal. Defense digging in again here. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. Well, sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. Yeah, not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. Now whistles here before the snap, but it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. False start, offense. And that'll set them back five. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Now it's Roethlisberger. And caught in the end 
zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Martavis Bryant from six yards away. And the Steelers have now made this a one-score game. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. So a big play now as the Steelers will go for two. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. But he will not get in here. He stopped up short of the goal line, and this will remain a five-point game. Boswell on now to kick this one away. On the return, it's Alex Erickson. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went into halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. The first down throw coming for Dalton. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Tyler Croft, the tight end, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Second and 10. Dalton once more. Green with a catch left side. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. That catch good for five. It's third down. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Now the Bengals on third down, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and five. Now a first carry from Giovanni Bernard. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Well, there was no blitz. That was just a draw play that, to be frank, didn't fool anybody. Did we hear the entire stadium screaming draw? Because <laughs> they, it felt they like saw everybody it. was all it. over that play, and the defense won that battle. Here's Kevin Huber now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Oh. 
Oh, what a move. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. And the Steelers set to take the field. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Goes underneath for Bell. And still fighting. 23 yards on the play. Bell is so good at that. He just catches so many passes near the line of scrimmage. In fact, the unique stat line for him last year, he had more yards after the catch than total receiving yards from the line of scrimmage on the season. That doesn't even sound real, but when you analyze his game, you understand why a stat like that can occur. His ability to catch the ball, be elusive, and also strong enough to break tackles, that allows him to gain all that extra yardage. So here we go, first and 10 now. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. This is Bell on the dump off. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Now Roethlisberger on first down. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Eli Rogers that time, and it's third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things, but once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Again, it's Roethlisberger. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He hit his first. Now this one from 48 yards away. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon. So apparently neither guy is immune. And out now, here come the Bengals. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage.
The drive will start with an option going left. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. And in this situation with a lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Here's Dalton. And Green with a catch left side. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. They'll run here with Mixon. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Brandon LaFell, his intended target, and it's third down. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Now, the Bengals on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and eight. Dalton here from the gun. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Bud Dupree in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds, and they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. So as you see the numbers, a very uncharacteristic start, but he's been more characteristic as of late. And usually we're seeing a very good start out of him because, let's face it, he's one of the best out there. But when he does have a start, as we just saw, would you call it uncharacteristic? You know mentally he's not that worried about it. He knows how good he is and figures he's going to get back on the beam real fast. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Carlos Dunlap in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Bell. Room here to run. Lay beyond Bell. It's a foot race. And he takes it all the way down to the 32. 
It's a big run that time by Bell. 65 yards on the ground. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Open man right side is Smith-Schuster, complete. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll come out in the pistol. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. That's going to set them back five yards. The offense operating inside the 10 at the 8 here. It's first and goal. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's got it. Nice gain of 8 that time, and it's second and goal. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. A great play there. Taking it in. And the Steelers have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So from three scores down, these guys have fought all the way back to grab the lead. And I'll just tell people what happened when they went up three scores. I wrote on your paper two words, game over, and now I'm eating those words. I, I was wrong. <laughs> a little salt, a little pepper. It goes down pretty easily. I will admit when I make a mistake. Well, it looked like it was going that way. This is one of those paging Frank Reich moments. I can't believe I just brought that up. Because Frank Reich... Maryland in college did it to my Tennessee Volunteers, oh. and I was a big reason why my team lost. Sounds like he still harbors some pain from that game. You know, we, we still got a little time to work it out with the doctor. <laughs> Boswell on now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to let this one go deep. And incomplete. Crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. 
Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. So second and ten here. Throwing again. Dalton. They'll set up the screen here to mix him. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Here's Kevin Huber now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. <laughs> It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Time is starting to run out, really becoming a factor. We'll see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back to the offense. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. A good pick up there at 22. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. So a challenge is upon us. I tell you, close game, fourth quarter. This is a huge decision. Oh, no doubt about that, partner. A lot has to be riding on this call. And you know it is a tight one because it has to be indisputable visual evidence in order to change it. Now here's the big question. Do they actually have that evidence? We're about to find out. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Fresh set of downs here. They go play action here on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And the offense here just looking to stay in bounds, complete the short passes, and put this game on ice. Easy, easy. 
Now Bell. And he'll take this forward for two, maybe three. But we do have a flag down, and they're already marching backward. They get the tackle, Marcus Gilbert, second round pick back in 2011 out of Florida. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. After the penalty, it's Bell. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 there. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. The battle in the trench is never more important than right now. This is third and in inches. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. with a minute 56 to go. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready. Inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it with Bell. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll bring up a third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. On third down, here's Bell. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Only a yard of the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down.
So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This will be from 56 yards out. And this won't get there, won't be on line either. It's no good, off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. So in a game that's been full of twists and turns, here's another with time winding down. And now, as you say, time's obviously a huge factor, but all you're looking for now is three. So one big play, maybe a penalty, and you might get that shot after all. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. A.J. Green with time running out. And the Bengals have taken the lead here in the fourth. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through all the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. Now Bullock to add the extra point. And it would appear they're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Bullock out now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he can't hang on to it. That would have sealed it. Instead, second down. So after all of this, it comes down to one final play. And just think of what it's going to be because from this distance, you've got to be prepared for everything. Hook and laterals, tip balls, you name it. A lot of laterals after a catch. Just got to be prepared, stay on your feet defensively, and tackle someone. Second down following the incompletion. One last shot for Roethlisberger. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Well, we saw a close game that kept us on the edge of our seats down to that final whistle. And right before that final whistle, defense with one last exclamation mark there getting the sack to end it. I love how you phrased it because we were waiting to see what would happen. Obviously, we thought something would happen downfield. 
Instead, it happens in the offensive backfield, and that's your ball game. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we sign off from Heinz Field. <laughs>